All right, so uh, basically what I'm going to show you guys how to do now is how to cut a mesh. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to mask off a mesh and how to save your file as a JPEG so you can upload it for your milestone. All right, so the first thing, uh, we'll cut this uh, sphere. We'll actually like just cut it in half. Um, so basically what you're going to do first is you're going to go to Geometry and make sure the DynaMesh is active. So you'll just go down here, you're going to click DynaMesh. Um, I'm going to turn the resolution up pretty high so I get a nice clean cut. Uh, and then I'm going to DynaMesh my model. Uh, so now that my model has DynaMesh active, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Subtool. Uh, and I'm going to append with a new subtool. And uh, let's just use a cube because that will give us a nice, clean, straight cut. Uh, so I'll uh, append with a cube. Um, and uh, then I'm going to resize my cube. Um, and, oops. Just drag it down to where I want it to cut. So let's say I want it to cut off the bottom of this uh, circle here or this uh, sphere. Um, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to look at the top of these these uh, little menus here at the top of this uh, subtool. So if you look, the first one that's clicked here is uh, the add subtool. Uh, this one turns the subtool into a subtractive subtool. So that means that when I redynamesh my sphere, it's going to basically take the subtool and remove it and remove whatever was encased inside of it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go to merge, which is down here at the bottom of the subtool menu. I'm going to click on the top sphere because that's the sphere I want to keep. Uh, and I'm just going to tell it to merge down. Now it looks like nothing has changed, but that's because we haven't dynameshed again. So then just close the subtool menu, open up my geometry menu again. Uh, and I'm going to turn off DynaMesh and turn it back on. And now we've got a nice clean cut subtool. So now this subtool is isolated. It is by itself and it's cut off at the bottom. So uh, this is actually a really great methodology for making like a nice straight flat base. It's level. Um, it's clean. So uh, that's how you... Uh, you know, remove uh, part of a mesh, um, and you can do this to anything. Like if you wanted to take the uh, the hand off your Z mannequin or whatever, you could do it this way. Um, so that's uh, that's the first thing here. Um, now I'm going to stretch this out a little bit um, just to kind of show you what masking can do. So um, masking uh, will basically take part of your model and make it unaffected by transformation or anything else. Um, so if you wanted to sculpt something, but you wanted another area of your subtool to remain clean and un unaffected, uh, basically what you would do is you uh, you would have your uh, you know your clay build up tool or whatever tool you're using, um, and you would hold down the control key, um, and you can see that that turns it to a masking brush. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on symmetry uh, because it'll it'll mask on both sides. Uh, so let's say we wanted to mask off an area that we didn't want to sculpt on. Like this. All right. Um, so now we want to uh, start sculpting. Uh, so now um, if I come across the surface here, see it stops. Because whatever's masked is not going to be affected. Now the other cool thing about masking is you can actually flip it. So if you go to the masking menu down here, you can tell it to do all sorts of things to your mask, but one of the other things is you can invert the mask. So if you wanted to now make changes to this side, but you didn't want to affect what you're doing over there, you just invert the mask. And now, we've got another area that's not changed, right? Uh, something else that you can do with masking is something called uh, extraction. Um, so once you've got an area masked, like uh, let's... Uh, Go around, flip around the thing so we can see what this is going to actually do here. Uh, you basically can go to, um, let's see, is it in geometry? I always forget where the extraction is because it's kind of in a weird menu. Ah, 
subtool. So um, basically what an extraction is, is it's a subtool that mirrors what a mask is doing. Um, so basically you can just hit extract and it's going to bring up this little sub menu here. Uh, you can change the thickness of the extraction right here. And then what you do is you just hit extract. It gives it a second and now it creates a new subtool on top of your existing subtool that basically is the mask. So this is a great way to like put clothing on something or whatever. You basically make a, make a nice clean mask and then you just tell it to project up a little bit. Um, and this actually, once you hit accept, will turn that into a whole new subtool. Now, if you want to make manipulations to this subtool, you've got to come back to masking and clear the mask. Um, but as you can see, the extract is a whole new subtool now. Um, so now if I wanted to take and, you know, trim the edges down, you know, I could do that because it's a whole other subtool set at the resolution of the existing subtool. So the extraction is going to match the resolution of the existing subtool, but the, you know, just like any other subtool that you create, you can then dynamesh this subtool by itself, etc. All right. Um, so the last thing I was going to show y'all is how to, um, gosh, that looks weird, uh, is how to save a picture. So basically what you're going to want to do is kind of zoom out uh, and, you know, frame it up so it's, you know, in a position that you want it to be. Um, and then what you would do is you would just come up here to the document tab right here and you click this um, and you'll tell it to export. Um, and then it's going to save uh, a, a JPEG and you're going to want to call it, you know, your name or whatever it is. So, you know, blah, C life, right? Um, don't call it blah, C life, obviously. Um, and you, you'll save it in your Google Drive, but I'm just going to throw mine on the desktop for the, for the purposes of this. So you just hit save. And now it's going to bring up uh, a menu to be able to, or, or like a screen that's going to allow you to trim in and just save you know, an image of the subtool itself. I'm just grabbing these little red circles and doing that. Uh, and then at that point, um, you would hit OK, and it saves a picture. Uh, this is also a great way if you want to post your sculptures on social media or whatever, you can do it that way, uh, because then you'll have a, a JPEG saved on your computer that you can put in your Google Drive and download onto your phone. All right, so uh, yeah, that's the little specific demo for today.